begin our show with China's Chang'e 4 mission on the far side of the moon after the first ever soft landing there earlier this month. The moon is not a dead rock, and we now have proof. China's Chang'e program has uncovered secrets on the far side that are rewriting everything we know about Earth's closest neighbor. They found something that initially defied explanation, sparking theories of alien structures and bizarre geology that would be right at home on the Joe Rogan experience. There was a whole story today about uh, China just landed on the far side of the moon. Mm -hmm. So they landed a probe over there. Yeah. The China-America war on the moon, especially if there's like something on the moon they can mine, it's very valuable. Oh, but the truth is, the reality is even more mind-blowing. It involves a power source that could end our reliance on fossil fuels and resources that will define the 21st century. The new space race has begun, and China just took a massive lead. What did China's rover really see? The far side of the moon is one of the most mysterious places in our solar system. Permanently hidden from Earth, it's a place of myth and legend. You see, because it's shielded from our planet's radio chatter, it's the quietest place imaginable, making it the perfect spot for listening to the universe. But in 2019, China did something no nation had ever done before. They landed a probe, the Chang'e 4, and its rover, U-2-2, right in the middle of this uncharted territory. For months, the little solar-powered rover crawled across the dusty floor of the 115-mile-wide Von Karman crater, sending back incredible images. Then, it saw something that made scientists back in Beijing do a double-take. Looming on the horizon, about the length of a football field away, was a stark, black shape. It was shockingly geometric, a perfect cube. The rover's first images were grainy, but there was no mistaking it. In a landscape defined by the soft, rounded edges of craters and rocks, worn down by billions of years of micrometeorite impacts, this object looked completely out of place. It looked artificial. The Chinese Space Agency, in a moment of playful speculation, nicknamed it the Mystery House. The news exploded online. What was it? An ancient monument left by a long-gone civilization? A secret base? The internet buzzed with the kind of wild theories you'd hear on a Joe Rogan podcast. After all, this is the far side of the moon, the place where anything seems possible. The thing nobody tells you is, space agencies are usually very careful with their language. For them to call it a mystery house meant that even they were baffled. They immediately changed the rover's course. Forget the original mission plan. They had to get a closer look. It took the U-22 rover nearly two Earth months to slowly, carefully crawl its way towards the object, zigzagging to avoid craters. The world waited, wondering what it would find. But that wasn't the only anomaly. Before the cube was spotted, during its eighth lunar day of exploration, the U-22 rover stumbled upon something else, something even more bizarre. While maneuvering around a small, fresh crater, Mission Control noticed a patch of material inside that was a different color and texture from everything around it. It was dark green and, according to the initial reports, had a strange, gel-like and glistening appearance. This was a massive red flag. The moon is supposed to be bone dry, the driest place imaginable. Nothing should be glistening. Nothing should resemble a gel. This discovery was, if anything, even more shocking than the cube. A gel implies moisture, some kind of liquid. Could there be underground pockets of water or some other volatile substance that was exposed by a recent impact? The rover's team delayed its other plans and carefully positioned U-22 to analyze the strange substance with its visible and near-infrared spectrometer, a device that can read the chemical makeup of a material by how it reflects light. The initial data was inconclusive, only deepening the mystery. It was a true WTF moment for the entire space community. China had just found two inexplicable things in the most remote place humans have ever explored. The mystery was about to unravel, but not in the way anyone expected. The alien structure that wasn't. As the U-22 rover finally rolled up to the edge of the crater where the mystery house stood, the world held its breath. The high-resolution cameras focused the data streamed millions of miles back to Earth, and the mysterious object was finally revealed. Everybody was shocked when they heard this, but the reality is that it was a rock. It wasn't a cube at all. From a distance, 
a trick of light, shadow, and perspective, had made a completely normal, irregularly shaped boulder look like a perfect geometric shape. It was a classic case of pareidolia, the same phenomenon that makes us see faces in clouds or a man in the moon. The Chinese scientists, still with a sense of humor, quickly nicknamed the rock Jade Rabbit after the rover itself because its shape vaguely resembled a rabbit hunkered down next to a smaller rock that looked like a carrot. It was an amusing, almost brilliant letdown. The world had been speculating about alien monoliths, and the answer was a space bunny. This story perfectly illustrates just how alien the lunar landscape is, and how easily our minds can be tricked into seeing patterns that aren't there. It's hard to believe, but the reality is that the moon is still full of surprises, even if they aren't alien in origin. So what about the other mystery, the glistening gel-like substance? That one required a bit more science to solve. After months of careful analysis of the spectrometer data, scientists finally published their findings. The strange material was not a gel and contained no water. It was a type of rock known as impact melt breccia. In simple terms, it was moon glass. When a meteorite strikes the lunar surface at incredible speeds, we're talking tens of thousands of miles per hour, the energy from the impact is so immense that it instantly melts the surrounding rock and soil. This molten material then mixes with other rock fragments and cools very quickly, forming a dark, glassy, brecciated rock. The piece U-2-2 found was likely formed in a much larger, more violent impact somewhere else on the moon, and was then thrown out, eventually landing in the small crater where the rover found it. It was about 20 inches long and 6 inches wide. Its glistening appearance was simply the smooth, glassy surface reflecting the harsh sunlight. While not alien goo, it was still an incredibly exciting find for scientists. It gave them a direct sample of what happens during a high-velocity impact, providing a window into the violent processes that have shaped the Moon's surface for billions of years. Similar samples were brought back by the Apollo astronauts, but this was the first time one had been found and analyzed by a rover on the far side. The cube was a rock, and the gel was glass. But the thing nobody tells you is, while these mysteries were being solved, another Chinese mission was about to find something that truly would change everything. Water on the moon. While the U-22 rover was busy debunking alien theories on the far side, another, even more ambitious Chinese mission was underway. In late 2020, the Chang'e 5 mission landed on the near side of the moon in a region called Oceanus Procellarum, the Ocean of Storms. This wasn't a rover mission, it was a smash and grab. The lander drilled nearly three feet into the lunar surface and used a robotic arm to scoop up soil. In total, it collected nearly four pounds of priceless moon rocks and dust, sealed them in a special capsule, and launched them back to Earth. It was the first time in over 40 years that any country had brought back samples from the moon. And what they found in that dust was a bombshell. First, they discovered a brand new mineral, a phosphate mineral in the form of a crystal column, which they named Changesite Y. It was a huge moment of national pride for China, making them only the third country, after the US and Russia, to discover a new mineral on the moon. The crystal was tiny, only about 10 microns wide, which is smaller than the width of a human hair, but its discovery was a massive scientific achievement. It proved that the volcanic regions of the moon are even more complex than we thought, but that was just the appetizer. The real shock came when they analyzed the soil for water. Scientists had known for a while that there was water ice hidden in permanently shadowed craters at the moon's poles. But Chang'e 5 landed in a region near the lunar equator, which gets baked by the sun at temperatures of over 250 degrees Fahrenheit. There should be no water there, yet they found it. Not as ice, but locked inside millions of tiny glass beads scattered throughout the soil. These beads, no bigger than grains of sand, were created by the solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles from the sun slamming into the lunar surface. This process creates water and traps it in the beads, protecting it from evaporation. This discovery is a complete game changer. It means water isn't just at the poles, it's practically everywhere on the moon. According to the study, 
the lunar soil could hold as much as 270 trillion kilograms of water. This makes the idea of building a permanent moon base suddenly far more realistic. Astronauts could heat the soil to release the water for drinking, growing plants, and even splitting it into hydrogen and oxygen for breathable air and rocket fuel. The moon just went from being a barren desert to a giant accessible reservoir. But the discoveries didn't stop there. Further analysis of the samples showed something even more tantalizing. The potential presence of organic compounds, the carbon-based molecules that are the fundamental building blocks of life. While this is not evidence of life on the moon, it suggests that the raw ingredients for life could be common throughout the solar system, delivered to places like the Earth and the moon by asteroids and comets. China's samples had just provided the key to unlocking the moon. But they also contained the secret to a new energy source that could change the world, powering the planet. Tucked away inside the data from the Changesite Y crystal was the confirmation of something scientists have been dreaming about for decades, helium-3. It's an isotope of helium that is incredibly rare on Earth, but has been deposited on the lunar surface by the solar wind for billions of years. Why is this so important? because helium-3 is the perfect fuel for nuclear fusion, the same process that powers the sun. Unlike nuclear fission, which is what our current nuclear power plants use, fusion with helium-3 is almost perfectly clean. It doesn't produce long-lived radioactive waste and doesn't risk a meltdown. It's the holy grail of clean energy. It's hard to believe, but the reality is that just 100 pounds of helium-3 could power a city the size of Dallas for an entire year. A single space shuttle cargo bay filled with the stuff could power the entire United States for a year. The moon is estimated to hold over 1 million tons of helium-3, which is enough to power the entire world for thousands of years. This isn't science fiction. This is the tangible, practical reason for the new space race. China isn't just exploring the moon for science and national pride. They are prospecting. Their missions are mapping out the richest deposits of helium-3, staking a claim to the most valuable resource in the solar system. Think about what this means. The nation that controls the moon's helium-3 could become the world's energy superpower, ending the dominance of oil and gas forever. This is why everyone, from NASA with its Artemis program to private companies like SpaceX, is racing back to the moon. The stakes are higher than they were during the first space race. It's not just about planting a flag, it's about controlling the energy of the future, this might all sound like it's happening in a laboratory far away, but it could change everything, and maybe sooner than we think. Is it possible that one day, the lights in our homes will be powered by fuel mined from the moon? Are we on the verge of a new gold rush, one that will take place a quarter of a million miles away? The thing is, this raises huge questions. Who owns the resources on the moon? The Outer Space Treaty of 1967 says that no nation can claim sovereignty over a celestial body. But it says nothing about private companies or nations mining its resources. We are entering a new, unregulated frontier, and the rules are being written right now by the rovers and landers crawling across the lunar dust. Should the resources on the moon belong to the country that gets there first, or to all of humanity? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the mysteries of our universe.